Hello and welcome to the introductional video on how to set up a motion system with Mitsubishi Electric's IQ platform using Melsoft Navigator. For more information on all the products used in this demonstrational video, please go to the MEAU.com website, click on the products link, go to the automation platforms link, and then select IQ platform. If you go to the start menu and go to programs, select Melsoft application, and then Melsoft IQ works, you'll find Melsoft Navigator. Launching this launches our umbrella software which allows you to configure the system. If I close this, I'm going to start with the motion dedicated device setting support function which provides a template to use for our project. WS Temp4 is a small scale Q172D 8 axis motion controller template with a Q26UDH CPU. If I click next, this is going to generate two different projects, a PLC project and a motion project assigns all the dedicated labels for all the transfer between the motion controller and the PLC with automatic memory sharing included. So here once it configures the system I will go into the module configuration double click on the module configuration and you have your rack set up. Now in order to make this match the setup I have here on my desk let's take a look at the setup on my desk. And here we have the IQ rack system with the Q64PN power supply, Q06UDEH CPU, which is a PLC with built-in Ethernet, Q172D CPU, which is an 8-axis SSCNet 3 motion controller, QX40 input module, QY22 output module, QJ71E71 Ethernet module, and a Q173DPX tracking card for tracking encoder, for example, for the motion controller. You'll see that the PLC is blinking with an error LED right now, meaning that there is no program inside of that controller. On the far left, you'll see a black connector. That verifies that this is an IQ-based system and not a, an older Q system. Okay, so now that we're back in Melsoft Navigator, we're going to configure our system to look exactly like it did on the desk. First thing we're going to want to do is scroll over here on the right to the QX40 module. We're going to have to add that into the rack to match our setup. QX40, slide it over into the rack. Okay, now next we want the QY22 Triac output 16 point module. Drag that over to the left as well. And then we want the QJ71 E71 100. And again, this has to match the setup that you have on your desk as well. And then finally, we'll drag over the Q173 DPX card. Drag that over. Now, next, what we can do is right click on the back plane go down to do a check and check the power supply capacity. This will tell us that the the check is completed and no error occurred. Down at the bottom you can see that we're only consuming 3.05 amps out of the total 8.5 amps available from the power supply. Next what we want to do is configure the network configuration. Double click on network configuration, move the module configuration all the way down and to make room for an ethernet line. Drag an ethernet line over and we're going to connect two lines to connect to the PLC and also to that ethernet card in the rack. Bring over two network cables and then drag them down to snap onto the module configuration. Now if we go back into the module configuration you'll notice that it's already configured them to connect up to the PLC and the Ethernet card. Now at this point what we can do is right click and do a system configuration check and you'll see that there is no error and no warning. Okay. Now this is still configured to use a Q26 UDH CPU. We have a Q06 UDEH CPU. So in order to change that let's double click on the PLC which will open up its project. Okay, now from within the project, we're going to want to change the PLC type. So go up to Project, Change PLC Type. It's going to tell us that right now we've set everything through Melsoft Navigator. Do we want the IQ Work software from the PLC side to send that information over to Melsoft Navigator? Click on Yes. Okay, here we'll select Q06UDH and say OK. It's going to ask us if we actually want to change it. Yes. And now it's completed. This will tell us exactly what has changed. Next, what we want to do is change this project type. It's in simple project. We want to use function blocks and structured ladder, so go ahead and change that. Say yes, and it will change the project. Okay, and lastly, we'll go over the system properties over here, and the project properties, excuse me, and we're going to change the PLC type just so we don't get confused later. And click OK. 
And now in your program setting, if we expand this, you'll see that our program right now is sitting in no execution type. That means it will not actually run and it will give you compile problem problems. So we'll drag this up into a scan program type and we're going to do a compile here by clicking on this rebuild all button. Rebuild all, it's going to do the check. Rebuild everything. Now we're going to save that project and we'll close down the PLC project. Again, nothing has been set for the program. Okay, now that we're back in here, we, we still have the Q26 UDH CPU. Um, we do not want that. So let's go ahead and delete that PLC now. And you'll see that that project that we just changed hasn't been assigned. However, it still maintains all the labels and all the settings that were originally configured with the motion template that we set up. So if I expand the no assignment project, you'll see that this project over here is sitting here unassigned. So I'm going to grab over here on the right, I'm going to grab a Q. 06 UDH CPU. Go all the way up to the top here. Drag this over into the rack. And if I right click on it, I can allocate project with controller. Now, here in my project name, I select that unassigned project to this PLC. And I click OK. Okay. Now you'll see that station number is 1. And if I click on the Ethernet module, you'll also see that station number is 1. We're going to want to change the Ethernet module so that that's station number 2, so that again there's no conflict. Now if I right click on the back plane again and do a check for system configuration, there's no error and no warning. And so now going back to our rack, you can see that we uh, have the motion controller with an INS display. That means it's an install OS mode. That means we need to install an OS before we can go any further. Um, first of all, it's a good idea to uh, connect an EMI cable for the force stop on the controller. This is new for the IQ-based motion controllers. So you can connect 24 volts to the motion controller now if you wish. Next thing you're going to want to do is plug in a USB cable to program the motion controller through the PLC. So now in order to install the OS on the motion controller, you go to the Start menu, Programs, Melsoft Application, and MTWorks 2. Here you'll see an option for Install. Click on Install. We're going to confirm our transfer setup. Go ahead and confirm that your USB PLC module, no specification, to CPU number 2. Say Connection Test. You'll get successfully connected. Say OK, OK, and then Install Motion Controller OS. From here you're going to browse to your directory that contains that OS. Click OK, and then Execute. Now it's going to download that OS file directly to the motion controller. OK, and then click OK, and then close, and then exit installation. Now you're going to want to turn the power off so that you can turn the first switch, the first rotary switch, to zero. By default, out of the box, it's set to A, which is install OS mode. So now with the power turned off, we're going to jump in here with a small screwdriver and we're going to change this first rotary switch, SW1, from A to 0. Okay, and then after that we're going to turn the power back on. And the display will change. And it'll go from 099 to alarm, okay? That alarm means that there's no program in the motion controller. And now that we've downloaded the OS into the motion controller, we can go ahead and double click on the motion controller and that will launch MT Developer 2, which is the programming environment for that controller. Inside of here, the first thing you're going to want to do is go into the system setting. Go to the system structure and you can see here that this is the SSC net line. Go ahead and just configure one axis for now. Go ahead and say OK. And there you have a J3 series amplifier configured. And then in the servo data setting, go ahead and click on servo data, and we're going to change the, the uh, home method to a data set type 1. Okay, that's going to avoid us having to use a limit from the amplifier. Okay, and then up here you can see this relative check. Go ahead and check that. It'll say down here, error 0, warning 0. Okay, and then save this project, and then close it. Okay, now we're going to reflect all the parameters to the controllers. Go ahead and go to Parameter and Reflection. This will send all of the parameters from the PLC and the motion controller 
down into their respective modules and make sure that there are no conflicts between both controllers and the memory sharing that takes place between them. So down here you'll see error 0, warning 0. Okay, and now it's time to write the, both, both of those projects. Go ahead and right click on the PLC in the module configuration and go to online write. Okay, this will pull up GXWorks 2. And within this software, you can then select program plus parameter, parameter plus program, and then execute. So I ask you if you really want to write, and then yes to all, if that shows up. And then finally close. And then close again. And then close again. And then the final step is to download the motion program. Go ahead and right click on that, online, write. This will launch MT Developer 2 once again. And we can select the parameter settings. And it will give you a series of messages. Um, you can click this to never show it again if you choose. And then that will complete. And then close. And then close again. OK, now you should be all set. So with your system, you can go ahead and open up the cover on the PLC. And go ahead and hold the switch, the run-stop switch, all the way to the left. Hold it there for a minute, for a second or two. And then it will reboot and then push it over to the right. It will bring everything back up online. If everything is successful, you will not have any errors. The motion controller goes into stop, and you see there is all green LEDs. Everything's ready to go. So now you can program your motion controller program and your PLC program and use the memory sharing if you please. And then you can go ahead and save your workspace by clicking on the save icon that will register all the labels and everything, all the projects, into one folder. Now you can go ahead and close that down and open up that folder. Here I have it saved on the desktop. And double click on the NVW file to open it back up again. That concludes the training on how to set up an IQ Platform PLC and 8-axis motion controller. Thanks a lot for listening.